Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Uh, today we're going to be uh, launching into this idea of how to uh, develop a uh, PERT CPM diagram for a particular project. And we're going to do a few exercises. We tried to do some of these using the OneNote uh, initially when we went off on uh, closure after uh, at the start of the summer. Uh, however, I, I felt it was a little bit difficult to sort of uh, make you guys understand this because one, I didn't have something to uh, sort of write on my computer screen. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to do these exercises with you using a particular software. Uh, so the next set of uh, videos, the next video that we're going to have is actually going to be an overview of how we can do this uh, particular exercise in a, com uh, in a computer using the software. Right. So you know, here's the diagram. Uh, you may roughly remember this diagram, so we'll just sort of focus upon this. Uh, there's what we need to understand here in this diagram is that there's a bunch of uh, activities there, right? On top of the arrowheads that you see here on your screen, there are some alphabets written. So there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And these are certain activities that have to be performed in order for us to complete a project, right? Now, the very first activity that we have here is activity A, which is listed on top of the arrow, and the duration of that activity is placed below. Now, activity A is the predecessor. So once activity A begins, it's going to run for that duration of time and then it will come to a conclusion. So this node here signifies the start of activity A, and this node here signifies the termination or the end of activity A. And this is the duration of how long this activity A is going to last for. Now, once activity A has come to a conclusion, certain other activities exist. Activity B and its duration, activity C, and its duration, activity D, and its duration. These activities, B, C, and D, all require activity A to have come to a conclusion. So these uh, B, C, and Ds are basically, we can say, uh, su succeeding activities. And A, in this case, is the predecessor activity. So the output of A, the end result of A, is going to become an input to B, an input for C and an input for D. So this input, the uh, output of A becomes an input for these three and these three can run. The duration of each of these is listed below the arrowheads here. Right? Now once activity B comes to a conclusion, this node here signifies the start of B, this node here signifies the ending. This node here signifies the start of C, the ending of C, the start of D, the ending of D, right? So once B has come to a conclusion, then the next activity can begin. This name is listed here, this duration is here. Uh, once C has come to a conclusion, the next activity can begin, this duration and names are listed here. And once D has concluded, the next activity can begin, its name and its duration are listed here. Each of these activities will uh, run for their own uh, time period. So this time period for this one, this one, and this one, and they will come to a conclusion here. So the starting of this particular activity, uh, E is basically this node, and the ending of E is this node. The starting of uh, F is this node, the ending of F uh, is this node. And G begins here, and G terminates here. Then we have another activity, which is H, and its duration is also listed here beneath the line. And this activity has actually three predecessors. It has this, this, and this activity as a predecessor, meaning that the combined output of these three activities becomes an input for this particular activity. So this activity cannot begin until these three have come to a conclusion. Activity H has its own duration, which is listed beneath the line here. So it will run for that many days. The starting point of H is here, and the ending point of H is right here. Right? Now you'll also notice here that we've got the number 24 in this uh, quadrant. Right? Uh, basically, this is signifying the total uh, duration of one of the parts here, right, which happens to be, in this case, the center part. 
So if you add this number with this number and then this number and this number, these all add up to 24, right? So I'm not going to, uh, in this video, explain this in the form of um, the particular diagram that we have here, in the sense that I'm not explaining how we're getting all these numbers in here. I'm simply suggesting that if we add across this line, all these numbers, if we add them across this line, that comes up to 24. If we take this path here and we add up the activities on this path, it comes out to be less than 24. And if we take this path here and add all the numbers on this bottom path, then that also comes out to be less than 24. So the center line through this diagram is 24 days in length, and we call that as the critical path activities, right? Uh, or we call this as the critical path. So this is the most important path that we have through this particular project. And this is something that we have to ensure that uh, the activities on this path do not get delayed by any amount of time, right? And the idea here is that the critical path has absolutely no float on it. So that implies that there's going to be no delays possible on this diagram. If you play with this, right? If you change the duration of this particular activity A, and you add a plus one to it, and you, you think that, oh, it got late by a day. So then if you add across that path, you'll find that this entire path moves forward by one day. So it's now no longer going to be 24, rather it will become 25. And the reason is that you have changed the duration of A, and it has become late by one day. However, if you take this bottom path or you take the path at the top here, just these two activities or just these two activities because they're not linked uh, directly on this path, you can add one to this or you can add one here or you can delay this by a day or delay this by a day. And you'll find that the project's ending date remains the same. So that is that this path adds up to 24. This may add up to 24 or this may add up to 24 because you delayed one of these, but that still means that the project is going to complete in 24 days. Therefore, the critical path um, is now no longer one because you may find that the top path becomes 24, let's suppose, right? If you added a day to it, maybe the top path becomes 24 as well or the bottom path becomes 24 as well. But nonetheless, the center path remains as 24 also. So in that way, you have now no longer a single critical path, rather you have two critical paths with you, right? So we're going to learn how we can do this um, a bit more automatedly uh, using certain uh, software. So I'll end this video and I'll uh, show you how that software works and how we can get pretty much uh, the same results using that software. Thank you so much.